Black magic, guys. Black magic. In yesterday's satsang, uh, Swamiji talked. Uh, he was actually answering a question, which I will give the summary on and then expand on how I clicked and how I cognize what Swamiji shared. So without further ado, welcoming you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So basically, there are some people who are questioning um, us, devotees, disciples of Swamiji, and they are saying, they are bringing the doctrine that when you have a mandala, uh, an alchemy product of Swamiji, or wearing the kantamala, you should remove it because Swamiji is using black magic, and through these things he is protecting you. So that's the basic attack doctrine that was brought forward. And um, so the first thing um, Swamiji uh, mentioned and made very clear in the video is that, in the satsang, is that um, everything that we are using is according to Vedas and Agamas, Rudrakshas. There's nothing about, uh, nothing new about Rudrakshas in the Shaivai tradition, Rudrakshas are there. Even the mandala processes that Swamiji is conducting and the alchemy products he is blessing his devotees with, they're all sacred geometries um, that are mentioned in the Agamas, whether it is the Sri Yantra, the Dakshinamurti Yantra, the Kalabhairava Yantra, the Kali Yantra. See, these are, all, these are all things that are deep within Hinduism. And then Swamiji was bringing the light and the simple, simple understanding that do you think you can put black magic on Paramashiva? So he also said that, you know, if you, if somebody, if you have a doubt, if you have any form of doubt, he said, you even he's, you can remove his, um, his pendant if you have that much doubt and you think that perhaps the Nyananjana inside of it or the pendant has black magic, but keep the Rudraksha, do not remove the Rudraksha. Or if, um, if uh, doubt can also be completed by saying um, the Nyananjana uh, that we are using in here is uh, made from the with at least partly from the Nyananjana of Arunachala. So um, he said that if you have a doubt whether there is black magic or not in the yantras, mandalas, alchemy products or uh, rudrakshas that Swamiji is blessing us with, go get kumkum from the Madurai Minakshi temple, go get vibhuti from the Arunachaleshwara temple, go get um, Nyananjana from the Deepam, from the top of Arunachala, or go to any major temple, take the prasadam and sprinkle that prasadam on the object. And if you think, and he was saying that, do you really think that any black magic can be beyond that? Uh, the kumkum of Minakshi is, uh, is Parashakti herself. The vibhuti of Arunachalishwara is Paramashiva himself. Arunachala's Nyananjana is Paramashiva himself. Do you think any black magic can be on top of Paramashiva or Adi Shakti, Parashakti? No. Um, and if you do think, I was also, one click I got is like, yeah, perhaps you will say some people and some people might say, yes, black magic maybe can be on top of that. And then without realizing, you know, they would have exposed themselves as being anti-Hindu because a Hindu understands that there is nothing more than Paramashiva and Parashakti. That is the ultimate. Nothing can go beyond that. So if you cognize that black magic is beyond Paramashiva or Parashakti, um, that means that you do not understand who Paramashiva is and who Parashakti is. Therefore, that means that you're not Hindu. So I thought like, oh, this is also like, you know, so some non-Hindu forces can have various interests in you removing these um, items from your life so that they can you know, influence you with their thought currents and perhaps their black magic. So another thing that I cognized, I was doing puja and then I was contemplating on that. And I just want to put a side note here that um, actually in the morning routine that what we do, what Swamiji is um, bringing back, reviving, doing yoga, puja and kriyas and all these things, um, I, my personal experience is it is during that time that I actually have the, a lot of contemplation and I, had a lot, I have a lot of clicks. So I can say that in one way, uh, for instance, puja, one of the way that puja is highly contributing to my life is that it's allowing me to have deeper, deeper understanding, clicks and cognitions about uh, what Swamiji is sharing with us, what is Sanatana Dharma. So I had another click. So the click I had during puja was that. 
somebody who comes with you with the worry of black magic means the the thought current of black magic is at the surface of his inner space his or her inner space and they think about that if the if black magic is something that you cognize see personally i understand black magic i've learned about it i've heard about it in the past but on a daily basis i don't think about black magic this thought current of black magic is not something that is happening in my inner space it's not a cognition from which i operate i have basic understanding basic knowledge but i do not it is not something that is like i said a cognition from which i operate but some people have black magic as cognition um, as part of their cognition they operate and you should be careful about these people and I'll tell you why if black magic is part of your cognition that means that you have a certain form of fear or greed towards that see black magic is what it is using incomplete knowledge avidya in order to fulfill your greed why you are greedy? Because you have not realized that you are Paramashiva and everything is yours. You still feel separate and you want to accumulate and possess more. So with that greed, you want the greed of, you know, that power. You know, wanting more power in order to get what you want. More power. Black magic is, uh, one click I got is like, black magic is a power, is like the, is the ultimate power hunger technique. Like it's a, it's a thought current which has the purpose of fulfilling your desire for power without taking responsibility. Because power comes automatically when you take responsibility. But when we refuse to cognize responsibilism, when we refuse to take more and more responsibility in our life and we want the power, then we become vicious, we become power hungry. And that's where all these, you know, fear and greed towards black magic um, comes into space. So somebody who cognizes black magic, you should be careful because that means that part of that being is somehow interested in that thought current. So there's every chance that this person knows about black magic and there's also every chance that this person practices black magic. Um, so that's why we have to be careful. Everything that Swamiji is doing is as per Agama and Vedas and Agamas. So it is, he's not reinventing anything here. He's reviving the tradition which is Sanatana Dharma, which is older than everything that we know present on the planet Earth, everything that we understand and we know. And, uh, and we should understand that. Um, see, some people might feel they want to remove Swamiji's, they have the doubt to the point where they want to remove Swamiji's pendant and uh, perhaps, and hopefully just keep the Rudraksha like Swamiji was saying, but I mean, Swamiji was sharing that, but the click, how I cognized it was like, see how much Swamiji is willing to compromise for you to have completion with your self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. See, the reason why you have dependent of Swamiji has various reasons, but definitely it is to show that you stand for Swamiji, that you align to Swamiji, to remind you to align to the powerful cognitions that Swamiji is empowering us with and all that. If you remove that, then, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a sign of so much... Uh, guru doubt, guru hatred, guru denial, and that should not be entertained. Um, like I, like Swamiji said, you know, if you have that kind of doubts, okay, go get some holy prasadam from the main temples which are considered most holy, the Jyotir Lingas or uh, like Arunachaleshwara or Arunachala or uh, Minakshi uh, Amman Temple, and sprinkle the prasadam on these items that you think that perhaps black magic has been done to it. And if you think, and if that happens, then after that, there's no way black magic can still remain because there's nothing more ultimate than the prasadam of these temples. Um, so, so, so yeah, I thought like, uh, it's crazy. See how people are bringing forward different kinds of thought currents just to destroy, um, just to destroy the feeling connection of people. Um, I'm seeing abusers and it feels like I don't know, they, they, they don't like the fact that we, we love Swamiji. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's just like, it's such, they, they can't digest it. They get so irritated. They get so agitated. Their mind becomes so active and agitated. Their emotions become so restless and agitated. And that shows that uh, there's a lot of incompletion. And then a lot of unclutching has to be done.
So unclutching from all these things, all these emotions and doctrines that we strongly possess and try to hold on to, and to let go and contemplate on the space of Paramashivoham so that we can receive the blessings and realize what Paramashivoham truly is and that we are that Paramashivoham. Like in the Upanishads, we have the story of Svetaketu, right, where his master, he said, Tatpamasi, Tatpamasi, Tatpamasi. You, Paramashivoham is this, you are that, you are that, you are that. And like that, Svetaketu got enlightened. So um, that's what I wanted to share in this video mainly. So be careful. Black magic is like, a, it's a, I think it's a taboo. It's something that happens very a lot everywhere in much more places than we think of. But obviously it is not something that comes out of the open for various reasons. Because of the immense the intensity of the fear or the greed that it triggers in people. So we have to complete this fear and greed. And that is the purpose of enlightenment, is to go beyond that fear and greed. And that is why we have Guru, we have Swamiji. Swamiji is there to show us the space that is beyond and to guide us beyond that fear and greed so that we no longer um, cherish these uh, low-level frequencies and all the sufferings that are manifested um, along with these thought currents. So yes, leave your comments below. What do you think? Black magic, have you been approached by somebody telling you this? How did they approach you? I'd be curious to know, um, to see, you know, so what kind of thought currents people are cherishing and how they're using um, these cunning ways to disconnect you from the guru-disciple relationship, from the essence of Sanatana Dharma. Yes. Um, so with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much. Subscribe, click the bell icon if you have not. Um, I upload many videos a day. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nityanandam. Oh yes, one thing, I forgot. Ikailasha <laughs> um, Vasi. So now, I, the link is in the description below. Uh, it's an, in the first on the description below. So if you're interested to get spiritual support, spiritual knowledge, to know more about the growing of um, Sri Kailasa, which is the greatest Hindu nation that is being revived by Swamiji, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan, Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Uh, register, it's free. You just register online and you'll be updated about everything that is happening. So inviting you all to become an e Sri Kailasa Vasi and uh, to enjoy the blessings and the space of Paramashiva. Nityananda. Uh -huh.